Hey, welcome back, Casabang's crew. This is video number five. Today we are going to talk about disassociative disorders. And this can get a little teeny bit confusing uh, considering we just went over schizophrenia. And a lot of these disorders get confused with schizophrenia. So I'm going to try and point out differences along the way. And then there is an activity that we're going to do in class that will kind of help you decipher between the two. So disassociative disorders are when your conscious awareness becomes separated or disassociated from your previous memories, previous thoughts, previous feelings. Okay, so what is that disassociation? Okay, um, literally dis, okay, taking away or separating association, okay, of your memory. So it can affect your um, affect your memory. It can affect your consciousness. Uh, can be current. Could be past. Um, person suddenly becomes unaware of some aspect of their identity or of their history, and they're unable to recall except under really special circumstances. So mostly hypnosis. Okay, hypnosis has been seen to work um, with disorders. The first disorder that we're going to talk about is disassociative amnesia. This is also called psychogenic amnesia. Okay, so this is amnesia that is due to a psychological reason, not a physical reason. So you weren't in a car accident and you hit your head and lost your memories. Okay, so there's no physical or medical reason for the amnesia. And that's why it's called psychogenic or disassociative amnesia. Um, memory loss is the only symptom. And it is often memory loss that is surrounding a traumatic event. Okay, a person will still know who they are. They'll still have memories of most things that happened in their past, but they may not have memories around that particular traumatic event. Um, can also be global amnesia, where they lose their identity without replacement of a new one. So this is someone wakes up one morning and just doesn't remember who they are, right? Doesn't remember their name, doesn't remember their job, none of their friends, none of their family. They don't remember their house, right? That's in a very extreme version. Here is an example of disassociative amnesia. Marion and her brother were recently victims of a robbery. Marion was not injured, but her brother was killed when he resisted the robbers. Marion is unable to recall any details from the time of the accident until four days later. Okay, so that is the brain's way of protecting you from that traumatic event or that traumatic memory, the traumatic information. Okay, the second one is disassociative fugue. Again, also known as psychogenic fugue. Um, this is a global amnesia, like the first one, but this time we have identity replacement. So we wake up one morning and we are a completely different person with a completely different name, a completely different set of friends, if any friends at all, a completely different job. Okay, so they leave home, they develop a, very, a new identity, no recollection of their former life, okay, and this is called a fugue state. If, big if, the fugue wears off, the old identity is remembered, right? all of that old information is recovered, and then the new identity is totally forgotten. All right, so here's an example. Jay, a high school physics teacher in New York City, disappeared three days after his wife unexpectedly left him for another man. Six months later, he was discovered tending bar in Miami Beach, calling himself Martin he claimed to have no recollection of his past life and insisted that he had never been married. Okay. Seems like a uh, defense mechanism, okay? A defense mechanism that has kind of taken over your entire life. All right. And then the last one is Disassociative Identity Disorder, DID. And this is the one that gets the most confused with schizophrenia. Okay. So this was originally known as multiple personality disorder. And a lot of people still refer to it as multiple personality disorder. Um, but it is now in the um, DSM-5 as disassociative identity disorder. Two or more distinct personalities that are manifest by the same person, but at different times. 
It is extremely, extremely rare and really, really controversial. There are a lot of people out there that don't believe that this disorder actually exists. Um, it has been tried as a criminal defense, but not very successfully. Um, the Hillside Strangler, who was a serial killer in California, um, tried to say that it wasn't him that did it. It was his alternate personality that committed all the crimes. Um, and I think this is like one of those cases where it becomes super controversial because um, the feeling was that he was just lying. He was just trying to get out of it. Like he got caught and he was just trying to get out of it. Um, and in that case, it didn't work. Um, I don't think it's ever actually worked. I'd have to do some research and double check, but I don't think it's ever actually worked as a criminal defense. Um, in the Hillside Strangler case, um, he he was convicted, Okay, right? They convicted both of his personalities. Um, the pattern typically starts prior to age 10, okay? So it is a disorder that we see in uh, children. And again, more often in women than in men. Okay, so here's an example, and then we're going to talk about some um, symptoms. So Norma has frequent memory gaps and cannot account for her whereabouts during certain periods of time. While being interviewed by a clinical psychologist, she began, began speaking in a childlike voice. She claimed that her name was Donna and that she was only six years old. Moments later, she seemed to revert to her adult voice and had no recollection of speaking in a childlike voice or claiming that her name was Donna. Okay, so symptoms. Symptoms of DID, okay, multiple mannerisms, multiple attitudes, okay, different beliefs, okay, so each personality takes on a different set of beliefs or attitudes or even mannerisms, okay, sometimes it has been shown that um, one personality is right-handed and a different personality is left-handed, so that's what they mean by different mannerisms, um, the patient can experience headaches, um, distortion of time, okay, so like blackouts, loss of memory of certain amount of time when the other ultra personality is present, um, flashbacks of abuse or trauma, unexplained anger, lack of intimacy or personal connections, auditory hallucinations, okay, so the personalities in their mind speaking to you, or speaking to one another. And then frequent panic or anxiety attacks. Okay, these are all symptoms of uh, DID. Okay, so the etiology of DID. Okay, causes have not been completely 100% identified. However, most cases are linked to interactions of overwhelming stress, very traumatic events, um, insufficient childhood nurturing, um, an innate ability for your brain to be able to disassociate memories or uh, experiences, traumas from your consciousness. And a high percentage of patients report severe child abuse. So a lot of the cases that are document, documented and reported, have been reported, are uh, women that experience severe, severe, unimaginable, severe sexual and physical abuse at the hands of, of a parent. So you can understand how that would be very, very overwhelmingly stressful, a very traumatic event. Um, if a parent is abusing you, then they're obviously not nurturing, you know, they're not taking care of you and they're not showing love. Um, so a lot of psychologists believe that this is the young brain trying to protect the child, right? So they just disassociate themselves when those traumatic events are happening. So maybe there is a, um, a personality that's stronger that can deal with it, and that personality protects the weaker personality. And sometimes there are many personalities, okay? Six, seven, eight, there have been documented cases of many, many personalities, and all a little bit different. So you can have a female patient that has a male personality, um, and maybe that's the one that protects you, um, that um, takes the brunt of the, the physical abuse or the traumatic event. Um, 
there have been cases where the personalities have been um, children. Um, lots of just differences in the personalities. Okay, so developmental theory um, in terms of etiology or cause for DID. Um, child is harmed by a trusted caregiver, parent, or guardian and splits off the awareness and the memory of the traumatic event to survive the relationship. Um, memories go into an unconscious mind and are experienced through a separate personality. Um, the process can happen several different times so that different personalities develop containing different memories and performing different functions that can be helpful. Um, disassociation becomes the coping me mechanism for the person faced with continued stressful situations. Okay, so some interesting things about um, disassociative identity disorder. Brain imaging research shows that uh, there is different blood flow in the brain with different alters. Okay, so this is one of those things that is trying to show that, yes, disassociative identity disorder is an actual mental illness. Um, another, uh, blah, another study found that people with a history of traumatic stress had a smaller hippocampus, right, um, similar to individuals that are diagnosed with DID, um, smaller amygdala, and studies in twins showed that, again, there was a heritability factor present, um, presented in um, disassociative identity disorder. So again, um, it can genetically run in families. Okay, so that is it for the disassociative identity disorders. Please, please, please make sure you bring me any questions tomorrow in class. And like I said, tomorrow we will do an activity that will help you separate um, the differences between DID and schizophrenia so that you don't get those too confused. Okay, all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.